Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is James and I'm continuing on again with the build of this Barnstormer 25S series. So I'm at the point now to where I'm finished building the airframe and now it's time to install the, um, the power, the electronics, and all the parts, the hardware for it. So in this video, I thought what I would do is just sort of um, go over all that stuff and I'm not gonna do any installations in this video. I'm just gonna go over um, my engine that I'm gonna use, the parts and these other type of things. So um, let's get started. I think I'm gonna start with the engine and then work my way across. So um, I decided to use a 25 size, a 0.25 size um, uh, glow engine. And this is a two stroke. This is the um, OS Max um, FP um, 0.25 um, engine and um, the the OS Max. Um, I always liked OS engines, and the FP series came out in like the 1980s, sort of the early to mid 80s. And um, there's sort of a story behind these, but essentially these are really good engines. They're not they're not um, super complicated. They're sort of at that time they were considered sort of a, not lower end, but just sort of a um, not their high end product. And they produced these to sort of fit that sort of market niche or niche whatever um, for sort of like a, a a lower level um, engine um, but these are great engines and I've um, the original plane that I built back in the 80s this actual plane I had a FP um, 25 on it so um, I was able to find this on eBay um, it was sold as new and it is new um, but it wasn't obviously it's not they're not these aren't being produced anymore um, but you can find you know like a lot of other things you can find used ones and new ones on eBay for you know pretty good pretty good deals and I do actually have to break this in um, it is the new engine, so it does have to be broken in. And I am going to do a, probably a video of just the engine break-in on this. So the next up is going to be the tank. The, the plans or the, or the instructions call for what looks like to be about a 6-ounce tank. And I have an 8-ounce tank. This is a Sullivan kind of rectangular 8-ounce um, tank. Now, it's sort of on the big size, for, um, um, big side for this this engine and for this plane but it does fit nicely and the reason I purchased this one is because um, again back when I built the original plane way back in when I was a teenager um, this was the tank I had in that one so I just kind of copied it um, I didn't really think too much about it I just bought an 8 ounce tank because that's what I had before so that's the engine Let's put this up over here and the fuel tank I am going to add a little um, like a refueler kind of like a refueling this little button I got these on, these were pretty inexpensive. I think you can get two of these. You can just look them up like a fuel, they're called fuel dots or fuel buttons. And this is just a, what's gonna have is the, um, the tube. I'm gonna have a third tube on the, on the tank and that's gonna be the filling tube. And um, that just comes out of the, you just mount it in the fuselage somewhere. And then it has this little, sort of like a little stopper in it, which is like right here, you can see that. And basically all that means is that the, um, the fuel tubing comes off and it goes into that and that's how it, it plugs it off and then you just screw it in to the side of the plane and it kind of makes refueling um, easy and it's kind of nice and clean um, the other way to do it would be to put um, is the is to pull off the the tubing off the off the carburetor each time and you can access the engine because on this one remember the engine is exposed it doesn't have a cowl so you can just pull the tubing off the engine itself, off the, off the carburetor, and fuel it up that way. But I don't want to mess with that because I want to keep that, that, that fuel tubing you know, intact and have a good seal. I don't want to be taken on off and on. So I will put like a little, like a fuel, like I said, a fuel dot somewhere over here. And that's it for the fuel, I think. Let me move this over here. Um, the wheel. So if you look on the plane, um, the wheel sort of like these thin kind of vintage looking kind of wheels you'd see like on a biplane or something like that. And I was able to find these. These are these are about the right diameter. Again, these are just DeBro two and a half um, inch, we call them micro sport wheels. They're foam. I'm not really happy about foam, but yeah, that's kind of what it, what was available. I'm gonna have to drill this out in here so it matches so that it fits onto the, um, the landing gear wire, which is a little bit thicker. So I will drill those out. I'll see how these work. On my previous plane, I just used sort of like the DeBro low bounce, kind of like the, the fatter wheels. But I thought on this time, I'm gonna to try to go ahead and use these and see how they see how they work out. Control rods. So the plane, um, the instructions calls for just to have a stick and then use um, use control like piano wire and, and do a setup with just a, with a rigid stick um, for, the con <coughs> for the control rod for the elevator and the, and the rudder. 
But I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to use these. Uh, these are sold um, Sullivan golden rods, and it's pretty long here. Obviously, I have to cut them to fit. But I think these are 440s. I do have some 256 sizes, so I'm not sure. I may go with this bigger size, but right now I'm going to go with the 440. And these have the um, whoops. Sorry about that. These have the um, this kit comes with um, the the clevises and everything to to set it up with. So this is going to be what I'm going to use for the um, the elevator and the rudder connections. And I'll have to cut those to fit. And then for the ailerons, you know the ailerons already have they're already mounted. The wires are mounted, but I have to use a linkage or connection from the um, the aileron servo to the actual control horn of the ale of the um, of the ailerons. And I'm going to obviously use I'm just going to use like this this kind of piano wire control linkage. So I'll cut a piece. It's going to have to be cut. And then bent, and it'll be it'll be kind of a small, a, a, a small length, but that's easy enough to do. And then that will just fit into the um, into the aileron. And then for the control horns themselves, the kit comes with these really. I think these are kind of big for this for this kit. Um, I think they're a little bit on the large side. So I'm going to probably go with the next kind of a smaller size down. And these are the um, these are just great planes. They're the small ones, I guess, the small size nylon ones. And really, they're, you know, they're about, I don't know, a quarter inch shorter, a little smaller profile. So I like those. I'm going to probably go with those. I don't want to have these giant control horns on there. I don't think that, I think these are, these are definitely a little bit oversized for the, um, for this plane. And then here are these little connections. These go on the, um, these will go on the, the, the aileron uh, linkage, the rods. These are going to screw on. And then this is what the um, this is what the control the clevis is going to hook into. So the aileron is going to be going like that. So these little guys are going to go on the aileron linkages. Um, let me see. I think that's just about it for the kind of hardware stuff. I do have to get. I'm going to get three millimeter size. Going back to the engine, I'm going to get three millimeter size uh, hex bolts instead of um, just like your, your more standard, you know, Phillips or your uh, flathead screw screws or bolts. I'm going to use the hex head, and I think they're three millimeter. And I'll get those to um, to mount the um, the engine on. And now I'll talk about the, um, the electronics. This is um, the Futaba um, T6J. It's a six channel Futaba. It does have a lot of features. In fact, it has too many features. I don't use them all. And then I'm going to be using for the servos. I'm going to be using these um, Futaba. These are the three S3004s. And these are, I don't know if they, I don't think they make these anymore, but they're still available online. There's a ton of them out there still, and they're actually pretty cheap. And these are just your basic, an, a basic analog servo. This is not a digital servo, so it can't be programmed, but I don't need to worry about that. I am going to step it up a little bit, <laughs> if you can call it that, for the aileron servo. Um, and I'm going to go up to this S9001. And I got this, obviously, um, well, not obvious, but I got this on eBay for like about $15. The price says $45. And again, I don't think um, uh, Futaba doesn't make these anymore. Um, but this is a little bit stronger servo. It has a little bit more torque in it for the same amount of um, voltage. So. Um, I'm going to decided to go a little bit stronger for the aileron servo since I'm again pushing two um, I'm pushing two control surfaces and they're long so this servo is going to be doing a little bit more work than my standard my other ones and then you know for the throttle and everything else these are these are going to be perfectly fine so the R2006 GS it's again it's just a basic six channel um, receiver this is a nice small receiver nice and light and that'll go good with the system. This is probably the most expensive thing I buy are these are the receivers. Um, and then power. So uh, I'm using, I'm a big fan of this Batteries America. So Batteries America makes all kinds of batteries for all kinds of applications. And you can go on there and you can buy, you can just look up Futaba or whatever Spectrum, whatever whatever radio system you're looking at, and you can custom order a, um, a battery for yourself. Now, and the cool thing about it is that you can order, this is a 4.8 volt, and that's what I'm going to be using. And I think I can go up to a 6 volt with this system, but I'm just going to use a 4.8 volt, which is going to be 4 cells. I think the 6 volt goes up to like 5 cells. Um, 
Yeah, that's correct, because it's 1.2, I think, volts per cell. I'm going with a little bit with a larger capacity, so I can obviously get longer flight times out of it. Now, if I compare this to the batteries that sort of come with the Futaba um, systems, or you order from Futaba, I think those are made by either Sanyo or Sony for Futaba, but they're like 600. Their capacity is only like about 600 on them, and they don't last very long. So, but I do recommend checking out um, Batteries America because they they have um, like I said, then you can order it, and then you just then you just pick what what connection you want. Like this is this obviously this is the J the J connector, the Futaba J connector. And then I will be mounting this uh, Futaba, just the switch, a simple little switch from Futaba um, on the plane. So I think that's about it for sort of like the hardware and electronics. Um, as I mentioned, this is just a little overview of what I'm going to be doing on this. And um, getting close to finishing the build. It's getting kind of exciting. I got to assemble the tank and do stuff like that. But that's going to be the next step. And let's see if I have anything else to add at this point. Oh yeah, and I will come back. Probably the end thing, the last thing I will do is just put the put the decals on. And these are just ma major decals. That's the name brand. Um, and these are, I think these are just uh, these just glide. These are um, slide on. These are. I'm sorry, they're not slide on. These are oh yeah pressure sensitive. So the, you peel these off, and you use water to kind of get them get them lined up, and then they just go ahead and they they stick on by themselves after you get them set up. So I'll put those on last. Join me next time for the next video, and where we're going to start putting this stuff in. And until then, thanks for watching. I appreciate it, and we'll see you next time.